So, Danica here, and today we're talking about custody matters. I uh, today's topic, something that kind of got on my radar, was was the topic of malignant narcissism. Malignant narcissism. Now, that's interesting because when uh, back in 2001, when I was sort of catapulted into this uh, this family advocacy. Uh, but through my own high conflict custody situation, I started looking up terms and some of the things that popped up in my, uh, I guess, on the radar and, and search engines and stuff like that. In addition to parental alienation, parental alienation syndrome was the term narcissism. So narcissism, I'm going to pull up. Now, it's interesting to me that many times back in the day, I actually had to sort of educate everybody, educate the mental health professionals on the different terms of parental alienation and also aggressive parenting and stuff like that. And I had to educate my lawyer, I had to educate the principals and the teachers and things like that on things to look for. Because the thing is, is a lot of times when you get a, even a mental health counselor, you get you know, psychological evaluations or whatever, hopefully your situation doesn't escalate to the level of having to get that. that a lot of times the people, um, even the professionals, are not uh, experts in those topics. So uh, they can actually get it wrong. So it's very, very important that they don't get it wrong. And a lot of times it's you, uh, you educate yourself and then and then have to educate people around you. So anyway, so narcissism. Narcissism is actually you know, the um, psychology today. I am going to pull up on the internet a definition. Definition. Define narcissistic personality disorder. So uh, this is the hallmarks of narcissistic personality disorder is grandiosity, a lack of empathy for other people, and a need for admiration. People with this condition are frequently described as arrogant, self-centered, manipulative, and demanding. Now, that's a very negative uh, Thing. Now, narcissistic personality disorder is definitely an extreme um, version of, of narcissism. However, and the same thing comes up. So my, what I want to, to really talk to you about is narcissism, even though it's, it's definitely being thrown around a lot in family court, in co contentious family disputes and things like that. Uh, narcissism is very common within in society and it's very common with uh, famous people and many famous people in fact they would say there's I don't exactly have the statistics but but narcissism uh, narcissists uh, make up most world leaders most um, famous people people who most CEOs most people of ma that lead major corporations uh, can be could be categorized as narcissistic. Why? Because the thing is, is it uh, many times. In fact, I would say that for a child's an infant's su survival, they have to be narcissistic. Why? Narcissism is all about me, 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 and. Just think about it, if a child, if an infant didn't have some sort of um, all about me, then when they were hungry, they wouldn't cry for, for mom to take care of them and feed them, I, mom or dad, uh, in, you know, if they were dirty or they were hurting or whatever, they would keep it to themselves. Well, that doesn't sound like a very healthy baby, a healthy reaction of a baby and stuff. In fact, on the elementary age, elementary, the reason that schools uh, break up a child's age development from elementary, and then there's middle school, and then there's high school, is because there's significant 
brain developmental shifts that happen in those different progression of ages. So in the elementary range, the, a child, their whole world is revolved around them, all around them and their family, their core family. They cannot even imagine, it's not even on their radar really, um, unless it's brought to their attention, that their, their friend in third grade has any, any different routine at their home than they have at their home. Uh, you know, they, Friday night is pizza night at my house. So of course, Friday night is pizza night for all my friends and, and all that because it's, it, um, they really only think about themselves. They hit middle school and that's when a lot of that times there becomes contentious relationships between parents and the, and the kids because the, the kids are noticing things outside of themselves. They are starting to, to explore and they're starting to see how, how, you know, a friend, they do it differently at their house and they're trying things on, but they're still, still, still connected to the core family. They're still about themselves. And then in high school, it becomes much more about themselves and their friends versus their, their home family. So back to narcissistic uh, personality disorder, many times, um, I mean, it's, it's our, job as a parent to teach a child to get out of themselves to stop thinking so much self-centered and to to think other centered now there's extremes to that because there's the narcissist tries to um it becomes so self-absorbed that they're sucking the life out of other other people and when a lot of times they will match up with another with a, a partner, it's almost like, you know, the two magnets that are attracted to each other. A narcissist is very much attracted to somebody that's like a codependent. The codependent, they may have even been trained in, in, a, uh, in feeling like they're nothing. It's not about them and it would be selfish to think about them. They need to serve others. So. And it would be a perfect blend for a narcissist that's all about themselves to to stick with somebody who it's never about me at all. So and that becomes a very, very unhealthy balance. So back to malignant narcissism. There's malignant narcissism. And I'm looking malignant narcissism. And I'm going to pull that one up. So my point being is, is narcissism is not something that's, that's altogether bad in children. It's when it gets to become an adult where the person does not realize their impact on other people. They're sucking the life out of everybody, always thinking about them, them primarily. Uh, but also, and then in, in course in court battles and, and things like that, then of course you don't really, many times the, the ex-partners are so in such high conflict that they're not even thinking. Uh, they, they could care less about the other parent. Um, so nar uh, malignant narcissism is really what we're talking about in, in seriously contentious uh, custody disputes. Malignant narcissism is a psychological syndrome comprising an extreme mix of narcissism, antisocial behavior, aggression, and sadism. Narcissistic personality disorder is found in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. That's also called the DSM-4TR, uh, but it's actually now there's a DSM-5. Uh, while... Uh, says here that narcissistic personality disorder was found in that, but it's, but malignant narcissism is not found in that, which I find that, that kind of interesting that uh, they haven't defined the two because like I did, I think in a, in another Facebook live, I talked about uh, the difference between hostile aggressive parenting, parental alienation and uh, gatekeeping behaviors. And I, I think it's really important to just to instead of lumping something into one big vat of uh, a label that it's good to, to break those things up. 
So uh, let's see here. Malignant narcissism. Um, a lot of this is, and and again, I'm just to be just to clarify as. I'm an educator. My background is in education and uh, awareness, not necessarily in mental health therapy, diagnosis, and, and everything like that. I'm a, I'm a researcher. So what I'm discovering is that it's a psychological malignant narcissism. I, uh, when you think about malignancy in a cancer, now there's cells, there's, uh, there's cysts that sometimes people develop, and some are harmless. They're just little pockets full of fluid or whatever. And then there's the malignant kind of things uh, like cysts and stuff. And everybody pretty much sees that malignant means something bad, maybe even deadly. Uh, so kind of connecting malignant with narcissism makes it really clear that we're not talking about self-centered, self-absorbed uh, kind of person, because even a self-centered and self-absorbed person can still uh, shift over and do what's best for the child and um, and not be a an unhealthy parent. They just miss, they might be an unhealthy person to be to be married to or or be in in relationship with, but uh, not necessarily unhealthy for as a parent but malignant narcissism is a psychological syndrome comprising uh, an extreme mix of narcissism antisocial behavior aggression and sadism often grandiose and all always ready to raise hostility levels the ma malignant narcissist undermines families and organizations in which they are involved and dehumanizes the people with whom they associate Malignant narcissism is a hypothetical experimental diagnosis category, meaning that it's not in the DSM-5. Not narcissistic personality disorder is found in the DSM-5. Um, so it's um, so, and the thing is, is just so you know, give you a little background. The DSM-5, which is also called the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders, so this is the Bible. Uh, for psychologists and a lot of times the court refers to these psych these um, the the DSM-5 is what gives uh, the psychologist you know like the teeth to grip into when they're trying to make a point in court and um, is to say that it's if it's in the DSM-5 then the, then the courts should be able to recognize it However, even the courts are realizing that, listen, we cannot keep throwing around all these mental health terms and, and all that. This, um, so a lot of times, some courts across the nation will not even allow you to even speak the word parental alienation and stuff, even though it is, there is a, a description of it in the DSM-5. So, but, uh, but if you can describe the behaviors it actually makes it a lot more palatable to, to, the, to the judge so the judge can make a decision. So they're not really, because this is the thing is the judge has to, to assess, okay, so this person has a college education in this field, but as we all know, there's a broad range of quality of professionals. There's a broad range of educators, good and bad, there's a broad range of mental health counselors, good and bad, there's a broad range of, of legal professionals, good and bad at what they do. So the, the, a judge, a lot of times when they're thrown this mental health disorder and it's backed by the DSM-5, um, now they're having to decide, okay, is this expert really an expert? And it's been proven. I know that that I've pulled up some several things on the on the internet where people have spoken in front of of committees where they, it's very clear. I I need to pull that up. I'll, I'll see if I can pull that up and repost it in the group around the, this person. He spoke in front of this committee and he was explaining how it is that you've got you know you just pick out 
Tom Dicker Harry, mental health counselor, uh, psychologist, whatever, and but they're not an expert in the behaviors and identifying parental alienation. They have no clue. Um, I know in my situation, I had two psyche valves. First one was um, Children and Families Department brought theirs in, their, their psychologist in. They come in. Um, she's crazy. He gets the, he should get the kids. And then we did an in-depth one with a, with a forensic psychologist who was highly trained and highly an expert in contentious uh, family relationships and, and all that. And it, it became very clear that, uh, that a lot of times when a parent is subjected to malignant narcissistic personalities, and sociopathic behaviors and whatever, you know, all of this, this icky, nasty um, stuff that what shows up is that is the person might show up with post-traumatic stress. Well, from the untrained eye, that's the key, the untrained professional or eye of a, a professional who has no, does not have uh, the trained eye, they look at the person post-traumatic stress disorder manifested as crazy um, and you look at the person who's got it all together who underneath might be sociopathic um, you know a lot of different kinds of uh, issues and um, that maybe smooth talker whatever whatever and and stuff like that so they look like they have it all together so from you know a 15 minute visit they may have it all wrong and now they really messed up a family they they've marginalized the a victimized parent uh in favor of the of the the parent who's targeting so it can make make a really bad situation worse and prolonged so um so malignant narcissism is what we're talking about uh, tonight. And um, I really, I, I appreciate the feedback when you guys, uh, you get up here and you, and you share on the, on the thread because that's really, I want to speak to the things that are, you know, that, that matter to you. In fact, I'm going to go to our group and see what's coming up. Let's see here. There. Okay. There we go. Um, trying to think. I certainly don't want to keep this longer than it needs to be. And um, I, you know, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat because I really, it, it means a lot to be able to get the feedback right away so that I can talk. Uh, I know that what I do, just to give you a little background, I'm a family mediator. I'm also uh, a guardian ad litem. And, um, and also I wrote a curriculum co-parenting that's approved in 42 states so my using this group this group is my opportunity to be of service to you in any way that I possibly can uh, because one thing I'm committed to is that is I'm first committed to the children the outcome of the children and I know that that the best outcome for the children is to be able to have access a loving relationship with both parents. Um, understand that that doesn't necessarily mean that things are set in stone, like 50-50 absolute. But what I do know is that it's important because it, sometimes it just doesn't work. You've got people in the military. You've got you've got all kinds of circumstances that do not that just 50-50 does not work. However, um, what I have found is that when we start at 50 50 then a lot of times that takes away the power struggle 
because then there's nothing to be fought over. There's not one person that has one up more than the other. So, um, so I try to, to um, really speak to the balancing of the two. And even, even when we're dealing with a, mal a malignant narcissist, a lot of times, well, first of all, you can't give your power away. You cannot be, you can't live in fear um, because I'll tell you that is them controlling you remotely. That, that's, that's, um, and you can't allow that. Um, the, uh, you cannot live in the what if world either. The what if world of, oh my gosh, I gotta, I gotta prepare for every little thing. The, it's important that you have a, uh, that if you're struggling with fear or anxiety, you're dealing with, with the, the, um, with all of this, uh, this stuff, especially in your swirl of possibly losing custody of your child, or you're afraid of what you're, of what's happening with your child when they're not with you, it can, it can just consume you. And I'm here to tell you that you've got to have, there has to be a time, a space in where you don't think about, you don't live and breathe the custody battle because it will consume you. It will, uh, it will take over your life. I know uh, for me, I had to channel my energies into, into other areas to try to, that, you know, kind of like planting a garden that had nothing to do with this garden. You really had to find something, something that, um, that lights you up and uh, that takes your mind off of the, the battle because it will consume you. And when I say that, and that can be malignant in itself, like literally malignant. Uh, I know in my situation, my uh, it manifested uh, two different kinds of cancer in my body. No doubt in my mind, at two cancers, let's see, melanoma, uh, uter uterine cancer, and I literally lost my hearing. I had to get ear surgery to restore my hearing. And, and no doubt in my mind, it was it was from the stress and the consuming, all consuming, um, living and breathing of this uh, court battle for over five years and dealing with children that were targeted against me. So, um, so please, just um, to, uh, have someone, have a few people that you're able to do your emotional dumping to if you need that. But make sure that they're the type of people that won't let you sit in it. In it, it's like um, that that are saying, "Okay, that's enough. That's 15 minutes of that. So we're going to set that aside, and now we're going to talk about something that is positive and uplifting." So just um, it's the only way that you're going to be able to survive this, and your health, your mental health, and um, is so important to your your relationship with your children thriving because the, I, I think if I had one thing I could do would have a do over, I wish I could race away is that is my children their the, the years that I, that I lost with them where I was in survival mode. So I couldn't even enjoy them in the moment. I was just like a zombie walking one foot in front of the other, doing the best I could surviving. And um, and putting on a happy face and pretending that everything was okay. So my children didn't get all of me. I didn't even get all of me. Um, I was just a shell of a person. So uh, to to make this conflict go way quickly as possible, so everybody can move on. And you know, and I still you know grieve over the fact that well, all those lost years that my children had to experience childhood in a high conflict situation and how is it impacting them as adults now? That's, uh, you know, that's something for a loving parent. It has a lasting like forever guilt trip, self-imposed guilt trip that is not even healthy in itself. But, um, even that, I think I, uh, it's one of the reasons I do what I do is to, you know, coach you, help you through some of these things so that you don't, you 
that um, your pain uh, is shortened. So it's a lot less than mine, uh, for, than the time that I had to spend. So, um, all right, so it is 25 minutes into this. I think that, that um, I've, give me some feedback, let me know what you think. And if there's any other topics that you would like to bring up, just bring it up in the thread and I will try to hopefully get it on my radar. Uh, send me a private message if you'd like to, to, uh, to talk to me and we can, have a, um, you know, we can we can talk about your case if you don't want to share it with the group. I love you guys. I'm of service to you. Thank you so much for being there, uh, for joining the group. And I will see you on Thursday.